right, does this, let's prepare for the test on Friday by solving this problem. A ship with an initial speed of 6.23 meters per second approaches a dock that is 255 meters away. The ship accelerates uniformly and comes to rest in 82 seconds. Show how to find the acceleration. Well, on this problem, when we think of our five UAM variables, we have an initial velocity of 6.23 meters per second, and we have a final velocity of zero. And this one, you don't want to miss it, but it tells you that the ship comes to rest, so we know it eventually stops moving. We know that its change in time is 82 seconds, and we know that we're looking for the acceleration. We also know that it's 255 meters away from the dock, but I'm going to write that down. I don't know with the information given in the problem if it made it all the way to the dock. All we know is that it stopped in 82 seconds. So I'm not sure we want to use this in any of our calculations. So those are our five UAM variables. We're looking for this one. So now we need our uniformly accelerated motion equations. Oh, there they are. What do you know? Okay. And we have time, both velocities. I'm going to try not to use this because I'm not sure that they mean that the ship is going to make it all the way to the dock in the amount of time given. We just know it's going to stop. So I'm going to use these four variables right here. So both velocities, time, and acceleration. Both velocities, time, and acceleration. So I think the equation for me is velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration times the change in time. So right now we have 0 equals 6.23 plus the acceleration times the change in time. And so I'm going to subtract 6.23 from both sides. And I have negative 6.23 equals 82A. So I divide both sides by 82. And my acceleration comes out to negative. 0 0.0759 Those are all the digits on my calculator. Here we have three significant figures. Here we have two significant figures. So the answer rounded to two significant figures is going to be negative 0 0.08. Okay, now we have that figured out. Can we put it on a graph? And when we put it on a graph, does this make sense? This might be the most important part of what we're doing to figure out how the test is going to go. So to start with, let's go ahead and put the acceleration on the graph. So it's negative 0.08. So I'm just going to make a mark right here. I'm just making sketches, not perfect graphs. So that's negative 0.08 meters per second squared. And we know that that lasts for 82 seconds. So our acceleration graph is going to have a horizontal line. All right, so that is our uniformly accelerated motion. Our acceleration is the same throughout the whole entire problem. Okay, so now if we look at our velocity, our initial velo velocity is uh, 6.23. Our final velocity is zero, so at the end of our 82 seconds, we know that our velocity is going to be at zero. So our line is going to look like this, and that's what the velocity graph is going to look like. The position graph I'm going to hold off for a second because I am not sure about this. We're going to kind of work our way backwards and see how this works out. So to start with, let's take a look at the slope of the velocity graph. So if I want to find the slope of the velocity graph, the slope is going to be the velocity final minus the velocity initial 
over the time final minus the time initial. So the velocity final is zero minus the velocity initial, which is 6.32. So that's negative 6. Point, excuse me, 6.23. And then time final is 82. Time initial is zero. So that's 82. So this is our slope. The slope of the velocity graph should equal the acceleration. Well, look what we have right here. The numbers that we divided to get our acceleration, negative 6.23 divided by 82 was negative 0 0.0759765, and that is exactly what we got for the slope of the velocity graph. So the slope of the velocity graph does match the acceleration. Okay, now, what if we take the area underneath the acceleration curve? So, what if I find the area of this rectangle right here? So the area of this rectangle, it has a base that's 82 seconds long, and it has a height that is negative 0.08 meters per second squared. And if we multiply those together, we're going to find the area. Now, there's one thing about this calculation. This is the rounded off version of the acceleration. In order to make everything work out right with our graphs, I'm going to have to use this number to find the area. So if I multiply 82 seconds times our actual acceleration that's not rounded off, then the area underneath this curve will be negative 6.23. So right now, the area under the acceleration curve will equal the change in the velocity. So our final velocity was zero, uh, zero. our initial velocity was 6.23. So if we take our final minus our initial, our change in velocity was negative 6.23. So we found out that the slope of the velocity graph matches the acceleration on the acceleration graph. And the area underneath the curve on the acceleration graph matches the change in velocity on the velocity graph. Okay, so now we're going to find the area underneath the velocity curve. So this is going to be a triangle, and it's going to have a base of 82 seconds. It is going to have a height of 6.23 meters per second. And it's a triangle, so we have to multiply by one half. So if we take one half times 82 times 6.23, we get 255.43. And just to show you, this is seconds, this is meters per second. So the seconds divide out, and we will just have meters. So now what we know is according to the velocity graph, if we find the area under the curve, we know that our change in position is 255.43 and it said the dock was 255 meters away so somehow it traveled further so it made it all the way to the dock and a little bit past the dock i'm guessing that's because the person who made up made up this problem probably rounded off this number all right now for the position graph we're going to use this equation and we're going to plot some points to make sure that it comes out correctly so we have the change in x equals the velocity initial times the change in time plus one half times the acceleration times the change in time squared. So we have the change in position equals 6.23 times the change in time plus one half times our acceleration times the change in time squared. And I'm going to use that fraction for the acceleration. So the acceleration, remember, is negative 6.23 divided by... 82 is take my time and put it in for t. Well, in this case, that's going to be zero, which will turn this to zero. That's going to be zero, which will turn this to zero. 
So at time zero, our position is going to be zero. Now I'm gonna put a 20 in here and a 20 in here. So I have 6.23 times 20 plus one half times this fraction, which represents the acceleration times 20 squared. And that comes out to 109.40. And I'm rounding these off a little bit because I'm gonna sketch over here. Um, I have a super accurate acceleration, but my answers for the position aren't gonna be as accurate. So now 6.23 times 40 plus one half times the acceleration times 40 squared. And that gives us 188.42. I do the same thing with the 60 and that's gonna give us 237.04. And then finally, I do it with the 80 and I get 255.28. And so these are all in meters. And so I'm gonna take this is 82 right here, so 80 is about right there. So I'm gonna cut it in half, that's gonna be 40. Cut that in half, that's gonna be 20, that'll be 60. And I'm gonna to try to graph some of these points right here. So I got zero and zero. I got 20 and 100. So let's go 100, 200, 300. So at 20, it's 109. At 40, it's 188. So still not up to 200. At 60, it's 237. And at 80, it's 255. And so our graph looks like this. So right now, we can see that the slope is the steepest right here when our velocity is the greatest. When our slope is the flattest, that's when our velocity is the least. So the slope of the tangent line of the position graph is always going to equal the velocity. So now we're going to try one more thing here. Let's find out what the velocity is at 20 seconds. So if we go back to our same velocity equation that we were using before, velocity final equals velocity initial plus A times change in time, we have velocity final equals 6.23 plus our acceleration times our change in time, and our change in time is gonna be 20. So when I plug that in, I will find the velocity at exactly 20 seconds. And that's uh, 4.71. Okay, so that's our velocity at exactly 20 seconds. Now our slope of our tangent line at 20 seconds should be exactly that same thing. So we're gonna pull a quick uh, calculus maneuver right here. The way to find the slope of this tangent line is to take the derivative of this equation right here. So I'm gonna take the derivative of this equation. So dx dt equals this will become the constant 6.23 and this will have two times one half which is one times the acceleration and then to the change in time. So that's gonna be negative 6.23 over 82 times the change in time. So this will tell us exactly what our velocity is or what the slope of our tangent line is at 20 seconds, which will be our velocity. So check this out. This equation right here and this equation right here, if I put a 20 in for time, on dx dt, I will have the exact same equation as the velocity equation. So obviously the slope of our tangent line on the position graph is gonna be the same answer as the velocity because the two formulas are the same.